Here we go. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Um, so I'm going to talk about headless wagtail. That is, um, I guess, a hot topic. And uh, that has um, probably different solutions. So I'm going to, to talk about which one we, we retained. Um, so I'm Remy. I'm a co-founder at uh, WITH. We are a web agency in uh, Madrid. We have about 40 people. And uh, we work for lots of uh, brands to create uh, like kind of public-facing websites that are going to be um, having you know, some deep integration to their system, but usually the, the content uh, is a dependency of what we do. So we need, um, let's say, a go-to solution to, to be able to have content management for those websites. And obviously, that is uh, Wagtail. Um, so first of all, I'm, I'm going to open uh, already open doors, right? But uh, what is headless? Just to be sure on the definition. Um, the idea is that you're going to put in between uh, your browser and your Wagtail uh, front-end framework like Next, uh, React, whatever. Um, and uh, the CMS becomes a repository for the content. Uh, and then it's available through some kind of API and then it's rendered by some uh, other framework for, that's more dedicated to front-end. And it's definitely something um, hot you know, in the web development. Lots of customers ask it uh, from us. But um, is it really a good idea? Um, like, because I, I know I, I've had the debate many times with people that are like, um, uh, come on, it's, uh, this JavaScript thing is it's not for me. I don't like it. And that's perfectly understandable. But um, le let's say my perspective is that uh, I have um, an agency to run, right? So if you look at the, the cost of different things, uh, for me, it's uh, switching people from project to project, uh, configuring different infrastructure for different projects. I have many, many projects to run at the same time, right? And so the JavaScript bundle size is uh, cost zero in comparison to everything else. So if um, using a front-end framework uh, solves you know, um, the ability to, to move on different things, it's, uh, it's pretty important. So um, it's, it's important for me that uh, sales project managers, UX designers, and so on, they know what to do and what to offer to the customers. They also, you know, know how uh, the pricing works. Um, and uh, obviously, the, the price for this kind of stuff is uh, unfortunately not uh, the same you know added value as it was 10 years ago so we have lots of juniors working on this we don't need to be we need to be able to get them uh, working uh, without training them for uh, too long and uh, of course we need to consider inside the agency that the talent pool is uniform so if we have many uh, different uh, people uh, frameworks the people we need to train them from thing to thing and we cannot switch you know like if there's an urgent bank not everybody can jump on the project and, uh, and save it um, and of course, the customer is always right in matters of uh, features. Like if they ask for something, uh, we say yes, because otherwise they go somewhere else, right? But a uh, project might start simple, and uh, 10 years later, you end up with a huge pile of uh, different features that you did not anticipate, and that can blow up. So um, if you have a stack that does not allow this, um, you will end up, uh, let's say, stuck uh, with two choices. either you uh, decide to go with uh, some hack, uh, like bend the stack over and uh, make it work somehow, but then you create technical depth uh, very quickly, or um, you need to rewrite everything to another stack that uh, works for you. So bottom line is um, I'm really looking for a full stack that will allow me to do everything that the customers always ask me to do, and uh, that is for the backend uh, wagtail because a uh, few reasons uh, that you probably all uh, know, but the Django models and the migration system is amazing, and it allows me to have uh, you know, a lot of guarantees on my data. The stream fields that I use a lot, probably a lot more than intended. Um, the, the ability to fall back to Django for uh, anything that Wagtail does not support, so that is you know, great, because it's not uh, WordPress that exists just to create uh, content. It's a full uh, framework behind. 
Um, it is secure and it is defendable. We have lots of security audits. Uh, it's very easy to say, yeah, we use Wagtail. It's a secure solution, uh, state of the art, blah, blah, blah. And of course, the talent pool, you can uh, find people that are able to work in Wagtail, or at least in Django, and upgrade them very quickly to Wagtail. And uh, again, in front of customers, it's uh, very important. Uh, why uh, SSR framework, um, like Nuxt in our case? Um, because the, it's the same template in the front end and the back end. So um, you get like classical type SEO and performance because the content is already generated as opposed to SPA where you need to download the JavaScript and then generate the content. Um, you can have any kind of interactivity you want. So if the customer goes, ah, yeah, sure, uh, now can we turn this into a Facebook-like comment section where you can like the things and so on, it's very annoying to be doing the template in jQuery and uh, mimic it, the template from the Django and so on. So it's very important to have the same on both sides. It comes at the cost of uh, smashing the CPU and the network a little bit, but uh, it's perfectly acceptable. And also, it solves some hard work problems that are um, the organization of the code, um, which uh, I guess is a matter of uh, taste, but uh, single file components in, um, in front-end frameworks. Basically, you put JavaScript, HTML, and CSS in the same file or together. And basically, it means that if you delete this component, you delete all the dependencies of this component, I mean, you delete uh, all the content of this component from one file. You don't have to go find it in your view file, in your template file, and so on and so on. And vice versa, when you, you dynamically include the dependencies. So uh, the compilers are able to make the tree and make bundles that are optimized for uh, exactly what you are going to display. So if you have a home page, you're going to uh, statically um, to load uh, you know, just the content of this home page. And then when you have a mapping component that is uh, taking uh, one megabyte of JavaScript, uh, then it will only be loaded when you go on the map page and not in, in the whole JavaScript bundle. And doing this with uh, just Wagtail is, uh, is a bit cumbersome. I mean, it's, um, it's more, you know, uh, bring your own solution to this usually. Um, so, what's the catch? Well, the catch is, first thing is uh, routing, because Wagtail's routing is kind of hard-coded. Um, this is problematic for uh, regular pages, but m most importantly, it's very problematic for previews, uh, because the rules for previews are a bit weird, and they are also session-based, uh, so that is um, not intuitive how to make it work. And um, overall, Wagtail is already messing a little bit with Django's routing, so adding some more uh, layers on top of that is uh, not a great idea. Um, I am not using Wagtail Headless Preview. That is a, a package that is uh, made for this. Uh, for several reasons, uh, you'll see that uh, basically the solution that uh, I offer that does not um, need it uh, because it is uh, token-based instead, instead of session-based, so you need more awareness uh, in, the, in your code. You need to pass the token around and you need, like, all the parts of the code need to, to know what they are doing, and I wanted to avoid that. The second big problem that I have is uh, the images, okay, because the front-end must take image decisions because it's the only one that knows uh, the size of the image, how it wants to display it. Uh, what are the different formats and variants of this image. Uh, you want to apply filters and so forth and so forth. And so that really depends where the image is displayed. You don't know in advance where this image is going to, to be, so you cannot pre-compute the formats and so on. But on the other hand, the front end cannot take image, uh, image decisions because of the security risk. If someone asks for the same image of uh, one pixel, two pixel, three pixel, and so on, you can very, very easily uh, smash down the server uh, by asking a million random uh, formats. Uh, so, and there's two solutions for this, but uh, it's, it's always generated by the server, right? You can either uh, do the render from the server and uh, then give the URL, or use the dynamic uh, render URL, but it's, it's the same issue. So, uh, I scratched my head a little bit when I had to make my first, uh, you know, headless project, and figured this. So, for context, it was, uh, conversion uh, of a classical Wagtail project into a um, headless one. So um, in the end, you, you need to consider that the front end is a proxy, right? Like um, you can use, um, to give an example, you can use Cloudflare 
to compress your images. So all the JPEG images are going to be compressed into WebP um, dynamically by Cloudflare. So the same URL, uh, it's just content transformation. Uh, so why not do the same thing with, uh, with the front end, right? So the browser will uh, ask for this page to Next. Uh, uh, hello, can I get slash foo? And then Next will ask from Wagtail, can I get slash foo? Then Wagtail re returns the content and next we uh, transforms this content into HTML uh, that is uh, properly um, you know, um, presented with a CSS and so forth. So that, that's <clears throat> kind of the mentality that allows you to also solve um, things like, okay, if there's a redirection on this URL, then you, you proxy it. So you, like you reply what the server is saying. If the server says uh, redirect, you redirect. If it's an error, it's an error. Etc. Etc. So it's making it a, a lot more simple to see it as just a proxy. So like basically, you make a catch-all route on your uh, front-end framework, and everything that is asked, you proxy through. Um, the, the other advantage is that when you do this, you are on the same domain for Django and for um, the Next. So the cookies they go through, um, and there's never a need for calls. You can call the API as much as you want. Uh, there's only one uh, trip to the API, you know, two, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really simplifying things a lot. So basically you just uh, say everything that is, uh, I don't know, slash API goes to the API and everything else goes to the front, and that's it. Uh, previews are a little bit tricky, but um, not that hard in the end. Um, so how does it work? Like basically when you make an edit in a Wagtail, it's going to first make a post to the preview URL to send the new content. And then uh, Wagtail is going to store it into the session, and then it's going to make a get, like the, you know, the live preview on the site, it's going to make a get on the page to display the preview. So it's pretty easy in the end. Um, with, um, like for example, I use a HTTP proxy middleware that I put in the vid server that is you know, rendering uh, Next and so forth. Um, I have a reg regular expression to catch preview pages, and if it's a post, I send it directly to Wagtail, and otherwise I put it through the rendering process. Um, so th that is uh, actually you know, uh, relatively easy to do, and with that you get the session-based previews. Um, they are rendered with exactly the same other code as the rest of the website, and basically Wagtail and Nuxt are both oblivious to this, except for a few lines of code here and there. Um, where I lied a little bit is that uh, the content is uh, HTML, right, in a previous example. So I have different strategies, but that's the first one. Um, you're going to say it's a bit wet, but um, bear with me. So the idea is that, uh, as I said, the first project that we did was a, a migration. So um, we already had the templates. We wanted to just redesign things a little bit uh, and make it, uh, make it server, uh, headless, right? Um, so what we do is that we do a single file component, but without the template. And the template comes from the Wagtail page. So basically, instead of serving JSON uh, from the API, um, we serve HTML from the API, that is the regular template. Actually, we, we did not even modify the Wagtail uh, source code for this thing. We just made a JavaScript that was able to um, you know, pass this HTML and inject it as a template into the view uh, single file component and like generate dynamically the components with the template from the server and, um, and uh, JavaScript from uh, compile, compile time. And that, is, that gets rendered into DOM. So basically, it's, a, it's kind of a hack. Uh, some would uh, call me a, um, an abomination, but uh, pros and cons, right? Pros, it works. Uh, so as long as it works, right? Um, it is workable in the sense that uh, it's not creating uh, tremendous amounts of technical depth. Uh, you, can, uh, you can deal with it. It's not uh, blowing up over time. Uh, it, it scales uh, without uh, being annoying. Uh, I mean, without getting more annoying than it is initially. Um, it's lowering kind of the cost of converting an existing project into a uh, next project. And you can still get the Core Web Vitals passing, et cetera, et cetera. So th that's really not that bad. It's kind of a um, trade off uh, that sounds a bit uh, demonic, but it's, it's okay. Uh, cons, though, is that it's 
really getting hard on the CPU because you need to compile all those templates at uh, load time, so that's uh, kind of annoying. It's not extremely uh, future-proof either because uh, it's kind of hacky, you know, so it's really on the edge. And the last thing is that you need a runtime compiler, so typically for Vue it works, but for Svelte or React, I guess uh, not because uh, they are compiled at uh, compile time. And uh, Vue is, uh, you know, initially parsing HTML itself. So that's a way to go, but that's not the definitive way to go, I would say. Uh, so another um, strategy that we are developing is um, to serialize the pages into JSON using the um, uh, serializer, the page serializer from Mactail. That is pretty easy to use. Um, we override the serve method to return JSON instead of HTML. So we, like, we just call the serializer. Um, this, this is solving the, the, I mean, so basically we return the JSON and then uh, Svelte can render the page according to this JSON and put the right components and so on. The only issue is the, the images, right? So how do we solve the images? Uh, because we still don't know the formats in advance. So by thinking about it a little bit more, um, it turns out that uh, you need about six, seven uh, formats that you can statically define. Because these days it's not, you know, um, like there's all the screen densities, uh, screen width, and so on and so on. And so basically, at the end of the day, you, you cannot predict the formats that you're going to need anyway. So you kind of need to take a probabilistic approach to say, okay, if I have seven sizes, it's going to be, uh, there's always going to be one size that is 10% uh, away from uh, the size I really need. And that's going to be good enough. And you could think also that is preventing you from uh, cropping and uh, zooming and so on. But on the other hand, it's uh, an opportunity to do it in the front end. So instead of having uh, the cropping done statically in the back end, you can have the cropping done uh, in a responsive way. Uh, so when you rescale, you know, the, the page is still cropped according to the feature from the Wagtail thing. So that will require to develop a specific component, but it's also a pretty good opportunity to like improve the uh, image management. Um, so as a conclusion, the front end is a proxy. Uh, that's really the core idea behind uh, this uh, approach is to consider that uh, it's just a pass through with some modifications on the content. So uh, we, we kind of give style to the Wagtail content. Um, there's two approaches to this. There's the server templated component approach that is kind of a hack, but uh, definitely works. So you send HTML, you transform the HTML into better HTML, let's say with JavaScript and CSS, and as the API-based approach that is um, overriding the serve method and uh, that uses a fixed set of images uh, to, to do the rendering. Um, this whole thing is open source, so um, the documentation is uh, not uh, excellent, probably because it's an entire project, but we're trying to improve it at every release. Uh, we have uh, what we call a model W, that is, um, you know, the same as model T. You can use any uh, framework as you want, as long as it's the same as in the uh, model W. So um, the idea is that uh, we use this internally at the agency because everybody can uh, knows it and we have tooling around this. So uh, basically uh, you can check it out on GitHub um, and try it and you can have the project maker. So that with this one liner, it starts an assistant to basically create a project uh, that is already uh, scaffolded with a Nuxt and a Wagtail and that allows you to have like everything that I just explained with a server templated component that is already running, so you just need to start coding basically, like all the modifications have been, uh, have been made. Um, and uh, the Svelte kit version that is going to be um, uh, dealing with JSON instead of uh, HTML, uh, we're going to release it in October, um, so it will you know, be released there. So we, like we release every four months, so it's not going to make the cut for July, but it's definitely going to make the cut for, um, for October. Uh, so thank you very much. I don't know if uh, anybody has uh, questions about this. I think we have... Um, 30 seconds more. <laughs> mm -hmm.